the state was wonderful enough to give me my permit on July 11th. You know, <laughs> it was like, wow, thanks. I had it. I had my application in in November. I gave up. I was just like, okay. Yeah. So you know, this this year or last year was our first year out there. We had started the whole process in November the year before. We got dragged through the mud and hemmed and hawed. Um, you know, uh, did you get one cycle out of it? Yeah, yeah, we did. But going in the ground on July 13th was, you know, two and a half months late. You know, it was just like, and I mean, I had given up. Like I had, been, okay, it's not happening this year. Great. I open up my mailbox. It's like, this is wonderful. This is wonderful. This is so exciting. But wow, <laughs> you know. What do I do now? <laughs> you know, I haven't ordered dirt. I haven't, you know. <laughs> so how many cycles do you typically have a year? So this year we did not do any light depth situation. Santa Barbara, you know, didn't allow it this year. Um, so we just applied for an outdoor permit, you know, canopy permit. And then they issued my permit on July 11th. Um, and then they came out with a new regulation that outdoor, if we did light depth, that we had to apply for a mixed use permit as if we had supplemental life. Okay. Yeah. It was just like, just because we're manipulating the time cycle with a black cloth, you're requiring me to have a completely different permit? Wow. You know, great. Thank you. Sounds like another way for them to make money off you. Exactly. Exactly. And. You know, Santa Barbara's just been rough. They've been really rough to deal with, as as have every other county here in the nation. I mean, I would, so in the next nine days, 3,500 grow permits are going to expire statewide. 3,500 of people who have been under temporary and they have no intention of issuing new temporaries. So it's going to be really interesting to see what happens you know, in nine days. Yeah, which is when we all want to be planning. You know. Do you have any advocates in, in uh, Sacramento that are going to help? We, yeah, we do, but you know, it's like the blind leading the blind. You know? Oh. And they have no intention of issuing, you know, we're on it every day, of issuing new temporaries. So are they trying to just stop it? Yep. They're using regulation to shut it down. And there's no path forward? Well, this is going to be an interesting year. You know, the last two years have been interesting years. Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. Well, Santa Barbara is not unique in any way, shape, or form. No, um, they were the most lenient in giving out temporary permits. I mean, they handed out a lot, but now they've gotten Fish and Game, Coastal Commission, you know, EPA, everybody else involved, you know, and none of them know what to do with each other. Our, our big holdup out there, um, I call it the catch 420. We applied to get a power drop, you know, for, for the field. We paid the $7,000 to, to the power company. They put us on their schedule. Um, then they uh, came to us and said, we can't drop your transformer till you have your land use permit in place. Well, then Santa Barbara came and they're like, well, we can't issue your land use permit till you have your security cameras up and running. Well, you explain to me how we install security cameras and make them up and running when we have no power. <laughs> and you won't even tell us where you're gonna put the transformer on the property. So we can't temporarily run the power, we can't 
do anything to that location. And then the fish and game is coming and saying, well, you know, we, we can't issue, we can't sign off on your land use permit until the power company has dropped the power and you have your security system in place. So none of them will sign the document or be the first one to say, hey, you need a land use permit, which we've already been up and running. We already got a state permit. We already got a county permit, but now they want this permit. Further, we have to have the Indian consul come out, do an archeological dig on the property to make sure it wasn't some ancient hunting ground or ancient burial ground. And we have to pay them $15,000 to bring their experts out to do this dig before Fish and Game will sign off. So it's the catch 420. They're like, yeah, sure, you can do it. We're gonna create a great regulatory process where this is gonna be successful, but we're gonna make every agency out there have the power to tell you, go jump in a lake. Yeah. Do you have a temporary permit that's gonna expire in eight days? We have a temporary permit that expires in nine days, yeah. With no, permit to, go With no permit to go Does forward. Does the CDFA give you great confidence? Not in any way, shape, or form. It's the blind leading the blind. I mean, is that the same for hemp? Does hemp have a more likely so, scenario to move forward? Uh, well, n no. No, because they put um, the Department of Agriculture in charge of that one, and they were supposed to have their regulations out, but they are nowhere close. So, you know, we're all pre prepped and ready to plant. We actually crack seeds. You know, we're all ready. And even that doesn't have a, a legal path forward in the state of California. Um, the farm, the, you know, they're supposed to have their regulations done supposedly by July 1st. They're not even close. They're not even close, you know. So my so confidence. All of this means that, and with the category three testing, we're going to have a, a lack of supply in the market. I say it's going to certainly affect that oversupply problem. Oh yeah, I mean, there's a reason the traditional for, market's for, booming right now. Exactly, exactly. There's a reason the traditional, but even the traditional market, there's a lack of supply out there right now. Right now, it's. Just like Brokers back in the day. Brokers and distributors are becoming much nicer to farmers. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, and it was, for a long time, farmers were just getting raped. You know, I mean raped. I have no other word for 